Hey, what's going on, guys? All right, so me and Jimmy are back at it today. Uh, we're going to work on some primitive skills again today. Jimmy's going to uh, attempt to make a fire, primitive fire set, and uh, maybe we can get some tips and tricks, and uh, as well as some um, what can go wrong, and we'll see what we can do to remedy the problem as it arises. So, stay with us. See what we can do. Okay guys, we are back and we have uh, found a dead cottonwood tree that we think we're going to try. We won't really know how dead and how dry it is until we break off a good limb. That one's dead. Pretty dead. Pretty dry? Yeah, it's pretty dry. Alright, let's see what we can do with this bad boy. Alright guys, we're back. And Jimmy has found a couple sections that he's going to use. Show everybody what you're going to use right quick, Jimmy. You're going to cut it off. Cut this knot off from here, about here. And we'll use that for our board and for our handhold. And we found another piece fairly straight right in this middle section of it. We're going to cut that off and we use that as our spindle. And we still got to find a bow, but we may be able to use one of the pieces off the upper part of this branch. Alright, we're not going to get into a big how-to to make your set on this one. Uh, if you guys have any questions on how to make a primitive set, I've got a couple videos out that show a little bit on it. Uh, one that's step-by-step. Uh, -step. So, Jimmy's going to go ahead and make this knock it out get back with you guys in just a minute all right guys while Jimmy's working on a set I'm gonna show you guys a little trick right before you see a downed fairly large cottonwood tree and hanging from it is the bark now on the underside of the inner bark it's real stringy so if you get yourself a good amount of that stuff like this you can make a pretty good tinder okay if you just take it just like it is and crumble it up in your hand wad it up and then just start rolling it this is gonna bust up the outer bark and it's gonna leave you with the finer inner bark the real stringy stuff like this. The more you work that, the finer it's going to get. Pull it apart, and you can see that it's separating from the large outer bark. It's kind of the same technique as jute twine. Alright, guys, Jimmy's got his set all done. Go ahead and show everybody your set right quick, Jimmy. Now the bow. The bow. <laughs> the bow. Uh, Doesn't really have much of a bow. Yeah, that'd be my fault. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, see if it'll work anyway and adjust accordingly. Spindle. Explain the two ends right quick. This is going to be for our uh, handhold bearing. It's got quite a bit more of a point to it less friction and it's going to make our ember our block with uh, kind of dug out a little, little groove in it so we can burn it in and then we'll cut our notch out and then we've got just a piece of old bark 
that we're going to use as our base and our handhold. And what kind of trick are you going to use with that handhold? Ah, we've got some cattail here that we're going to uh, take some of the slime out of it and apply it to our notch in our handhold to uh, lubricate that a little bit, less friction on this end. And that slime that Jimmy speaks of, that, that stuff is uh, good for a lot of things. And we'll probably discuss that in a later video. But we're going to go ahead and get set up here and uh, let Jimmy burn this bad boy in. Okay, I was just going over a uh, little tip with Jimmy on a good way to load the bow and uh, incorrect of loading the bow. Especially if your bow just, well, doesn't quite have much of a bow in it to begin with. Just a wolf. Yeah. So, let's show the, uh, the incorrect way right quick, Jimmy. Do you remember? <laughs> uh, nope. Jimmy's new at this, boys and girls, so... Uh, I can show you the correct way. Be, uh, be gentle on him in the comment section. <laughs> I got thick skin, it's alright. <laughs> this is the correct way. Like so. Alright, now when you put your spindle to the string, was it on the inside of the string or outside of the string? Closest to the, it was the bow on the, or outside of the bow? It was on the inside of the string. Okay. The bow is on the inside and then you roll it on the outside so it puts your loop on the inside there keeping it further away from the bow. If you were to do it the other way like that then it's on the, inside, on the inside and when you run the friction it's going to hit here. Yep. All right, so Jimmy is going to attempt to burn his notch in right quick. Now, one thing I'm going to express right out the gate is to move your foot in just a little bit closer to your spindle. Okay. Now, did you apply any lubricant at all to your bearing block I or your handhold? If you haven't, um, just spit on it a little bit in that notch, and that should be good enough for now. Jimmy chews, so that might be a little gross, I don't know. God, you're nasty. Shut up. <laughs> okay, now you're not going to push down too hard and not too soft. Now, see, when you're pulling that back, you're going to be hitting your knee. Pull, push your, uh, there you go, bring your bow a little bit forward, there you go. Something else we're going to do after uh, he gets it smoked in or burnt in is we're going to remove some of this grass also. Okay, the string's a little bit loose. It's loosened up after all the, uh, well, we'll just say it loosened up a little bit. Okay, so we've readjusted the string, and we're going to go ahead and give this a shot, see if we can get this thing burnt in. Okay, scoot your, scoot your shin into your wrist just a little bit more. There you go. Okay, a little bit faster. And once it starts rolling smoke, go ahead and stop. Looks like it's actually burnt in pretty good right now. It's starting to roll smoke, so go ahead and stop. Okay, good and burnt in now. Now we're going to go ahead and make the notch.
All right, we're running out of light pretty fast, so we're going to hope that Jimmy gets some good luck. He was just um, lubricating his handhold right quick. He's got a tinder bundle all made up. And uh, basically the tinder bundle is exactly what I showed you earlier with the uh, inner bark of the cottonwood tree. Now, after you burn your notch in, if you have to make any adjustments to your bow, this is the time to do it. If your string needs to be tightened, this is when you do it. Pretty good. Okay, Jimmy's good and set. Scoot your foot in just a little bit more. You want it pretty close to your notch. Okay, now when you first start going, you're just going to go at a nice, easy, relaxed pace. Now, if any of that, any of this grass is going to get in your way, which I see that some of it is, we're just going to knock it out of the way. And because them things can distract you. This piece of string hanging down, that can distract you. Now, like I said, go at a nice, easy pace. Watch the toe of your boot now where your string is. There you go. Okay, hold up. One thing we didn't do is we didn't knock off the charred end of that spindle. Once that spindle gets going, guys, and gets burnt in, blacken up, so you're going to want to knock that stuff off. That squeaking noise that he was getting is usually a tall tale sign of that. going to want to watch for now is his socket, his notch, it's going to start filling up with dust. Okay, go ahead and uh, re-tighten your string and re-pointing that non-friction side. Now you can hear it starting to grind. That dust should be filling up pretty fast now. That's okay. We've got a good pile of we've got a good pile of uh, dust now. So even if you lose your spindle, you're fine. Since the light's going down a little bit, I think I'm going to jump in right quick and uh, 
have him watch me for just a second and then we'll uh, go from there. Guys on the dirt bites are dirt bites. God, I can't talk. <laughs> the dirt bikes are flat ass getting with it. All right, the friction or the non-friction side on my handhold might have to be pointed off a little bit. Okay, you'll notice that there isn't a squeaking sound going on. That's because I'm applying a good amount of pressure on it. See the smoke starting to roll out. So we're gonna speed up now. that smolder just a second. And we've got an ember. So, I'm going to knock this ember out of the way. Now that Jimmy saw a little bit. We're going to have let him have another stab at it. Makes you sick when somebody just steps in and just flat knocks it out, huh? I'm going to talk to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. It's all right. Now, he's doing a good job. He's got a nice motion going. Next time I'm going to have him plant his hand just a little bit more in his shin so it's not wobbling all over. But I'm not going to stop him. Where's your other? I brought up two hand holds. This one's starting to get a little deep. So we might use that one now. Okay. You got a good notch. As long as you can keep your hand yeah, braced, on, braced on your out. shin real good. Yeah, I was bracing on my forearm up on my knee instead. Okay. Now you hear your squeaking noise, that might be due to a little less or too little friction. So you might want to push down just a little bit, I don't know. You're going to hear that, you, did you hear that deep grinding noise that I was getting? Yeah. That's what you're going to want to hear for. As soon as you start hearing that, you know you're really, you got a good motion going on there. There you go. All right, that was a good rhythm. Try to give yourself more stroke. For everybody at home, the first time you try this, this is exactly what's going to happen, so don't get frustrated with yourself. Keep at it. Keep trying. 
You will learn, you will find a rhythm, and you will find that feel. Okay, now slowly come to a stop. There you go. Okay. Move your, tip it over, let the ember drop in. Tap it with your spindle. Gently. See it smothering at all? Did you lose it? It's all right. That was a, that was that was really good. You almost had it. I may have stopped you just a little prematurely on that one, man. Alright guys, I'm going to try to jump in again, get him an ember right quick, so that way we can uh, see if he can blow this bad boy into flame. Okay, well, that's going to be two times Jimmy wants to punch me in the face. <clears throat> Let that thing smolder for just a second. Now when you do this, this is the important part. Okay, now with a, another stick or something, you're just going to gently coax it down into that bundle. Just let it breathe for just a second. Okay, go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, gently start blowing on it. Start closing in the sides. Pick it up. There you go. Okay, pick it up just a little bit more. Okay, now there you go. Okay, let off. Blow a little harder. Good job, man. <laughs> Got it.
Okay, go ahead and stomp it out. All right, guys. Well, I'm glad you uh, joined us today. Um, Jimmy, I know, wants to punch me in the face now. <laughs> but anyway, I can guarantee that he's learned a lot tonight, and uh, he's not going to give up. We're going to do this some more until he gets that. He's right there. I mean, there was a couple times that I knew that he was going to have it, and as fate has it, something goes wrong. So, like I said before, anybody at home that's having these same kind of problems because it's, you know, you're just starting this, don't give up. Keep trying. Learn from your mistakes. Like I said, you will get the feel of it. You'll get to hear it. You'll, you'll hear it. You'll feel it. You'll just know. You'll smell it. So, as always, guys, have a good one.